All right, we're dealing with the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. I, I actually like to say I can't wait till we're done it. <laughs> who likes to hear about reproofs? And who likes to hear about, you know, people not doing the right thing? I don't. I want to get good things and good, happy things. Amen? But uh, this is the whole counsel of God. We need to learn it. We see how things can get out of hand in time. Why? We can go down the street. We can see who's doing it. We can see the immaturity in, in many people. We can see the... Uh, the false doctrines that people pick up and how fast it happens. Do you know Paul said, I was, I marvel at how fast you fell away. It just takes, it's like that. I, I'll tell you the big one. Just take the take this book out and put another book in and, and watch it fall. Watch it fall. Next thing you'll do, you'll be a music ministry. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> That's what they do. They bring the rock concert in. Let's bring the smoke in. We'll make the fog come in. <laughs> Lights and all this other things. And we'll deflect the voices and all this. Do you think God wants to hear your voice or do you think he wants to hear a synthetic voice? He wants to hear yours. He wants to hear you. He could care less about these electronic devices. He wants to hear a... He doesn't, That's why he says a joyful what? Noise. He didn't say... He didn't say, I want you to sing with talent. I want, I want you to be successful. He says, what? I want you to sing. I want you to sing. Amen. So uh, in the first chapter, he said there was divisions. That I'm, I'm going to hit you on divisions, he said. Uh, you think you're one of these, one of, you're of this guy, you're of that guy. You've got names for this and names for that. Well, Paul baptized me. Well, Paulus baptized me. Well, the pastor baptized me. Well, I only got it from a missionary. Well, I did that. I'm, you know what? I went to Hiles Anderson or I went to PBI. A Ruckman said this or Jack Hiles said this or Trinity Baptist said my home church way back in Hawaii. You got no, this is your home church where you're at. Amen? Where God places you, that's your home church, not my home church down there. Look, if you're on vacation, that's different. But when you your home, this is this your home church. This is your home church. I live here. Because yeah, I, I tell you, I was a soldier. You go all around the world as a soldier, and I hear it all the time. Well, my home church, who cares? You have no idea what's going on back there. They could be doing crazy stuff for all you care. You're here now. What's that mean? Grab hold of eternal life at where you're at and be content with where God has placed you. Amen. And he says other things. He says there's a difference in chapter 2 between the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of God. See, the wisdom of this world would get you puffed up. The wisdom of the world will get you puffed up. By wisdom, the world knew not God. Look, the best they could come up with, this is the best. Everything came by accident. There was just this big explosion. It's all here. That's the best they got. The best they got about how you came about as a monkey. That's the best they can do. This uh, life came from a, a rock and it, it, a lava shot onto a rock. Uh, there was some kind of explosion inside of it. Fissure, I have no idea. Spontaneous, whatever. And guess what? Here you are today. <coughs> Isn't that something? Just a great old accident. Hey, and that, the funny thing is, the same people who say those things write the books and turn around and say, look what I did. They want all the credit for saying everything they do, but won't give somebody else the credit for doing what's real. Like all the ink that's on the pages, all the th just fell all out of the sky and landed on the, landed on the book real. Doesn't even make sense, does it? Somebody had to design it. And it was God. And look, it's, it's as easy as this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Amen. It's as easy as that. The best they can come up with is, well, there was an explosion, big bang thing, and the monkeys and everything else. And, talk, and then they turn around and look at you and think, it's, I dream a genie like God shows up and does this. And then they have that as their, the best they got. It just appeared. Oh, well, that's great. By the world, the wisdom of the world, they knew not God. And he turns around, he says things like that, uh, don't get puffed up even though you learn things. Uh, you need to be, if you're going to judge, you need to be a spiritual judge. You need to sp judge spiritual things on those causes. You want to be a right judge? We learned it in Sunday school. What's that? Judge right. Stop judging by, well, he's my family member. Isn't that right? 
a right judge. Hey, look, my kid lied. He stole. And you go over and lie for him. You do. How many mothers have lied for their children? Now we're going into, we went into chapter 3 and we started off and he said, you're carnal. That's the first thing he said, but unto carnal. I couldn't speak to you spiritual, I had to speak to you as carnal. What's carnal? The definition, a babe in Christ. We're talking about saved people. What's a carnal Christian? It's a babe in Christ. Hey, look, I, got, I have had people in our church after 40-something years. Guess what? It's being saved 40-something years. Babes in Christ. If somebody has a Calvinistic doctrine which, say, which says uh, God has saved, put these people aside to be saved, these people go to hell, uh, this, they will get saved no matter, that's a baby's doctrine. Calvin, John Calvin was a baby. He was, two, he was only two years in the faith and next thing you know he's writing books. He's a baby, people. And, and no different than uh, you just get saved and somebody comes up and he brought this up. What's the five? Do you have? Do you know the five manifestations of the uh, of the Holy Ghost with evidence and speaking in tongues? Man, I don't even know. I don't even know anything. And now you're putting that in my lap. Yeah, right. You know what somebody's doing? They're deceiving you. Right. That's a babe in Christ, an immature person that would do something like that. Yeah. You're trying to grow, and they're trying to kick you down. Amen. And then the next thing you know, you try and get involved, you try and think about it, and you know what you become? Faker. Yeah. Lying to yourself and faking it. And you think it's real. You got caught up, you ever get caught up in the emotion of something? I know you have. Look, I, I know people get caught up in it because the Powerball lines are huge. Thinking they're going to win. Look, it's like a quadrillion chance that you're going to win. You'll take more chance standing in a line for two days to get a Powerball. And they tell, what are the chances? Very low. You've got more of a chance being struck by lightning three times. So, we got down to verse number nine. He says, uh, he says uh, don't worry about even witnessing. You've got envyings. What's a, uh, look at verse number three, he says in chapter three. He says, for ye are yet carnal, uh, why is that for us? Whereas there is among you. This is a carnal. This is how they are. They envy. I, I want what he has. I want something. I envy envying somebody. Uh, what's the next part? Strife. Strife. Getting mad. That feeling you get right here. You know that feeling you get. You you got to walk away from that. That's being carnal. You got to walk away from that. This isn't. This isn't something to get mad over. You shouldn't strive about it. What's the next thing? Division. Division. Well, I know uh, I'm part of these guys. I'm in this camp. And that's what happens is divisions. And then the last part is you walk as men. That one verse tells you everything you do as a carnal Christian. And he tells you what you can listen for. I'm a Paul. You start putting names together. We have that today. What's that? This is talking back then. They were all walking the same. They all had one, one faith. Then what happens? Somebody else comes along, they start naming it after him. That's what we call a denomination. Everybody understands denom? What's that of a name? De you named it. Uh, just so you know, if you're, uh, if you're in something that, like, well, uh, Luther, Luther, I'm a Luther. Uh, who, did, who made Luthers? Well, that's Martin Luther, right? You'll never get further than how Martin Luther went. You want to play the Wesleyan games, you'll get as far as John Wesley. That's about as far as you'll ever get. But you named it. You can only get as far as your name. Name it Christ. <laughs> your Bible was by Christ. People say, well, you, you call yourself, you're a Baptist people. People, listen up. We have a Baptist doctrine here. This church is a Baptist doctrine, 1769, I think it is. And what it says in there is we go by Scripture. Solo scripture. Amen? That's our doctrine. We hold to it. But we're not Baptists. Only when we have our fellowship meal. We're Baptists. Why? We like to eat. 
God, you guys didn't get the joke. When you became Baptist and you got, whenever somebody baptizes you, I guess you become Baptist, get in the thing, the first thing that you must do is go out and get a uh, crock pot and a casserole dish. Amen. But we are Bible believers. Amen. What's that mean? When the Baptists go against the Bible, what do we do? We go with the Bible. Amen, right? That's right. We are Bible believers. I, I'm a Bible believer. I pastor a Baptist church. It's as easy as that, right? Amen. That's how it works. So he wants to understand. Uh, uh, myself and Yvonne, we went out. We went witnessing. Uh, I spoke to these guys for like 20 minutes. And, uh, and I kept preaching the gospel. And I kept planting seed. I planted a seed in one of them. And, and, I, and I kept going and watering. I walked away. She starts to do the same. Uh, and all of a sudden they get saved. So she I led them to Christ. What he's saying there is, he says, what's the difference between one that plants and one that waters? Yeah. It's God that gives the increase. What's that? God does the saving. Yeah. Right. You're just a tool that's going to be used, but you're using God's tools. So he gets the credit. What do you usually say? You, somebody says, hey, man, that was great. And what do we say? Glory to what? God. Deflected to God. Praise God for it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He says that's all there is to it. We are, uh, look at verse number uh, 8. He says, now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And, and every man shall receive his own reward. According to what? His own labor. Did you notice, hey, Miss Adrian, you notice it didn't say by your success? Of your labor. What's that mean? You could labor and be unsuccessful, and God looks at the labor of it. He told me to preach the gospel. He didn't tell me to go get people saved. They, they, they have their choice whether they want to get saved or not. Amen? Amen? It's God that gives the increase on things. So now we're looking at uh, verse 10. We'll get to 23 today. And if you would, let's stand for the reading of the Word of God. Amen. <clears throat> The Bible says, verse number 10, it says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another build it thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Father, bless the word this morning, Lord God. Help us through it. Talk to the people, not, not just the preacher talking, Lord Father. You need to be in this. We speak to your people, Lord Father. Get to our hearts and let them hear thy word and hearken unto it. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, we went through the judgment seat of Christ. You can sit down. It's okay, Bruce. <laughs> well, anyway. It says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me. Now watch what he says. He says, as a wise, what? Master builder. Do you realize that Paul's saying he's a master builder then? He says, like as a wise master builder. Paul's building. He says, I have to, but he didn't say I am. What he's saying is, I want to be as a, as a master builder. That's what he's saying. I want to be as one. Who do you think the master builder actually is? It's Jesus Christ. And you're being a tool uh, being used to me. But you have to have a good attitude. Uh, look, uh, if I called you a loser all day, you'd become what? A loser. 
You ever notice that God isn't like that? He doesn't turn around and say, you're a loser. He turns it. We, we'd like to think, I mean, let's face it, uh, if you go to Baptist churches long enough, they like to beat people and beat people down. They like to shear the sheep, get them all upset. Why don't you build them up? Build them up. They've already been broken down. That's why you're here. You're here because you've been broken down. And now you're trying to build up. What's that? You've got to feed them. You've got to feed sheep. You shear them twice a year. How many here have been sheared? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Paul says as a, as a, as a wise master builder, the wisdom of, of God, and he, can, he looks at it like that, and he says there's three things here. There's a laboring for Christ is like three things. You know what it's like? Number one, he says it's like growing crops, planting and sowing. He says it's like growing crops. He, he says uh, that ye are God's, verse number nine back there, he says, for we are laborers together with God. We're working with him. You're in the business with the Lord. Then he says, ye are God's husbandry. What are you doing? You're, you're growing crops. Ye are God's what? Building. He's liking you unto what? A building. You're three different things. You're a building. You're caring for people, it said. And guess what? You're also building something. As a wise master building, watch what he says. Paul says, I laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereupon. Uh, there was a guy that came to this town years ago. His name was Bob Taylor. Uh, he set a church up here. There was another guy that set a church up over here that was a real New Testament church. They were starting it. They laid foundations. What's the foundation? The Word of God. Christ. You are faith cometh by and hearing by the word of God. What did you hear? The word, right? That's your foundation. God spoke in everything into existence. When somebody says, what's the foundation of the earth? Stop looking for the insides of the earth. The foundation of the earth is let there be light. Let there be, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Let it, ha let it happen. God spoke everything into existence. He's different than every other creature, every character that's ever been around. They think that uh, in Japan, they think stuff came off of a blade, hit the uh, ocean, and uh, got hard, and that was their, that's their islands and archipelago. Where'd you get the knife from? Where'd you get the sword from? Where'd you get this stuff from? You have to understand something. God's the only one that makes sense. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Everything came from nothing. That's created. There's only, look, you can't create anything physical, but you, you can create something uh, in your mind. What's that, a thought? You can create thoughts in your mind. Most of them are probably not good. They're probably evil, but you create things in your mind. That's the only thing you can create, but God, he creates, he created physical things first. If you look at it, he, he gets the word create just a few times. And the last time is a spiritual thing. What's that? He didn't, he didn't, make, he didn't create man out of uh, his body. He got it out of the, he made it. He made it out of the earth. What created a man is when he blew the breath of life into his nostrils and man became a what? Living soul. He put a spirit in his soul. That's what he did right there. He put a spirit in his soul and, and his soul became alive inside of that body. Now that body got up. Without the soul and the spirit in that body, the body lays there and it's cold. But God puts a spirit and a soul in there and it becomes a, a living soul once it has a spirit in it. Look at, uh, look at verse number, uh, number 10 again. He says, I have laid the foundation, another build it thereon. But let every man take heed. What's the next word? How, right? Miss Roxanne, isn't it how? Okay. Did you notice he didn't say what? He said how you build. Did you notice that God says how? What's that? There's a he has a, a way. Uh, his way is by the word of God. He doesn't say what you build. Why? Because if it's what you build, you could be building a, a romper room. He says you better take heed on how you build. Why? Because it has to be built one way. It has to be on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And if it's not Jesus Christ, you've got the wrong building. 
You see, you're, you're looking at a building. God says there's walls. There's things in the building. He looks at it and He says, that's, what I, that's how it has to be. You've got to be like a, a, a master builder. What's that? He says, you've got to look at it and you've got to see and have a vision of it. How it should be. Uh, just so you know how you're going to get that vision, that's by the Lord. Amen. He says, how you build it thereupon. What's that? That foundation. How you're going to build it. Thereupon, look, I'm going to tell you how most preachers go out and build. It's about greasing the wheels. We're going to have programs. We got bus routes. We got knocking doors. We got street preaching. Let's build it through that. Hey, look, I tell you what, I want you to love God first. Amen. Your service is no good, Miss Adrian, unless you love the Lord. That's what they're missing. Go to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Now, these are church ages. There are seven of them. They're church ages. There are also seven churches, right? But there are also times of, times of, uh, of, of like an era of those churches. They're ages or uh, that time limit. Probably in the very beginning, it's uh, the church age was the apostles' church. They called it the church of Ephesus. Look at verse number 1. It says, And unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. That's the Lord. Watch this. I know thy works. It's a working church, right? They work. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. Uh, the best thing that church has right there, they have an inward look. They got good doctrine. They can even tell when, this is the time when apostles were alive. Somebody's walking in, I'm an apostle too. No, you're not. They knew who was an apostle and who wasn't. Today there are no apostles. If somebody comes through that door, says he's an apostle and a prophet, what do we say? <laughs> liar, liar. Why is that? That church is over. You'll notice something about that church. It's the church of Ephesus. The next church will be in. In these cities. All the churches until the last one, which is the, the church of the people. The church of the Laodiceans. It's the people's church at the end. All the others are going to be in. Why? The church was set up. Stay with me here. Revelation chapter 3. He says, I know thy works. He says, he turns around and he says, um, that the apostles and are not yet found them as liars. Verse number three, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. You know what they have? They have a good outward look. They want to see other people getting saved. They have a good inward look on themselves, and they have a good outward look to want to get others involved. Amen? Amen. But watch what happens. They got a good inward look. They got a good outward look. Verse number four, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Didn't, this is Jesus speaking. Why do you have something against them? Because thou hast left thy what? First, First love. love. First love. Amen. You had a good inward look. You had a good doctrine in your church. You know what? Your people know as much as you can about the Bible. Do you realize that that can happen in here? You guys know more Bible than they know out there. All these churches around, you know more Bible. Every one of you. You've been here long enough. You know more Bible than they do. Guess what? You have an outward look. You want to see other people get saved. You want to see other people come to a knowledge of the truth, don't you? You have a good outward look. But it's no good without the upward look. Amen. Nevertheless, I got something against you. Why? You've left your first love. You've left Jesus Christ in it. You're so worried about the, the events in the church, the programs in the church, how this one is in the church, how the church and the church and the church. Just come to the church, the church, the church. What would it matter if they didn't get saved? Amen. Right? You lost your first love. What's that? You lost the upward look. It's no good without it. Go back to... Uh, 
1 Corinthians chapter 3. How you build it is what matters. Why? Look at verse number 11. He says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You know what he's telling you? It must be a must. You are preaching the foundation is what he's saying. You have to preach the foundation there. Uh, verse number 12. Now, if, notice the condition. These are saved people. What's that tell you? You don't have to do it. Nadine, you don't have to. You don't got to do nothing. I'm saved. That's all there is to it. I can go live like a devil now. You can come in here with an M16, rip everybody away, and you're still saved. It's not the way it is. You have to understand that. Oh. I'm going to say to me, come on, don't get all mad. Look, you got to deal with God after that. You want to deal with Him? See? Right. Amen. That's the difference. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he says, uh, he says, now if any man built upon this foundation, the right one, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, he says, now if you build upon it and you build with these things, he said, every man's work shall be made plain, manifest. It shall appear. It's going to be there. Why? The day's going to declare it. Hey, look, we see it right here. Look, I came up into this area. I had nothing. I went out there. I had a Bible. I had a sign. Preached on the street. Showed people. Handed out tracts. A building came out of it. You know what this building is made out of? Wood, hay, and stubble. What's that tell you? It's not going over to the promised land. This building is going to burn. Look what it says. Wood, hay, and stubble. Amen? Amen. This is wood, hay, and stubble. But guess what? You're not. When you die, you go to heaven, right? When the rapture comes, where are you guys going? You're going to heaven. You're going to live for how long? Forever. These are the things. These, you, you, you are the things that stay in eternal life. You're the precious stuff. You're the gold. You're the silver. You're the precious stone. And in fact, you're the precious stones. We're building a house. And the house is a house of stones, precious stones. Amen? How is it built upon with gold? What's that? You've got to have the right king. The king has the gold. You've got to build on silver. What's that? Redemption. You're building it upon Christ that died for your sins. That's the redemptive quality. The silver. And what do you get out of it? Precious stones for your crown. Now you understand? That's the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to go in. What's that? Some things will be burned up. What preacher? You're building. You did so much. Burned up. God made me a preacher so I'd be at church on Sunday. Amen. He says, for the day shall declare it. That's what the day is going to do. It's going to declare it. Uh, if you want to build, this is how you build. And the day will declare how you built it. Why is that? Because it shall be revealed by how? By fire. What's fire going to do to this building? What would fi if I lit a match right now and, and 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 start building? What would happen to this building? Yeah. It would smolder. Next thing you know, it would burn. Mm -hmm. What's that tell you? This this is what happens. It's going to be tried by fire. And guess what? It will burn up. But guess what? Won't your knowledge of this book won't burn up? Amen. Get it now. You'll go to eternity. And guess what? You won't have to backtrack because in eternity you're going to be learning this book you're going to be learning the ministry in, the, in eternity why we have a lot of people to evangelize do you realize that people are going to live for a thousand years how many kids they're going to have god's going to be the health care system it's not going to be you know obamacare or nothing like that where you have to uh you have to like basically pray that you're going to have a good pregnancy nowadays 
Government health care. That's the worst thing we ever did, people. Hand it over to government. Hey, look, they handed over the, uh, the, they handed over the uh, education system to the government. How's that going? It's going terrible. We're going down. Other countries are going far above us. Now, our health care is now under the government. Guess what? They have a chart now. Well, if your sugars are this, you have to take this. If your thing is this, you have to take this. You know, most people are on medication they don't need. They keep sending them in and sending them in, sending them in. Why? They want customers, not cures. That's right. Amen. Let's keep going so nobody beats me up. He says, for the day is going to declare it. Why? It's going to be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work. Now look what it says. Of what sort is it? What is it built upon? Well, how would you build it? Hey, look, I, you know how I got Mark in here? I got Mark. I went to his house. I turned around. I, gave him, I, I brought some groceries. And I said, hey, Mark, come to church. So he came to church. Is that the right one? No. Mark, he's leaving next week. If I don't go get him a bag of groceries. Whatever you do to bring them in, you're going to have to keep doing. What does that tell you? You better bring them in by the word of God. Because they'll stay. I've actually, man, I will tell you, I've messed up so many times trying to bring people in by this way, that way, help them out and all this other stuff. And as soon as I stopped helping them, they're gone. It's hard for me because I tell you the truth. I love helping people. Anybody been around me long enough, they'll say, I, I don't know, I just love it. I love people. I love helping them. I, I, I could probably be rich if I didn't. Thousands of dollars, my wife and I just give them out, whatever. I, I, I'm not going to, what am I going to do? I'm not going to, I got to tell you something, man. I, I'm, I'm not having, I'm not having my, uh, my bank in my funeral procession. It's not going to happen. I want it all out of here by the time it's done. I don't want the Antichrist getting any of my money. Amen. He says every man's work is going to be tried by fire. Look at verse 14. If any man's work abide through the fire which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive what? A reward. If it abide. You know what about, I, I'll tell you one I got right now. It's going to abide. She's going to abide. A letter to Christ. She's going to abide. I got that, at least that part. I got some others. That still got, I got Julie. Julie and her, and the children. They got, they're all, they're all, I let them to Christ. The ministry through here, they're going to, that's going to abide. That's what's going to abide, people. He says, if any man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be what? Burned. He shall suffer what? Loss. Loss. But he himself shall be what? Saved. Yet so as by fire. He's going to be, he's already still saved. He's still, now it's talking about he's going to be left there. What's that? You're not going, he's not going to turn around and say, oh, well, you did a bad work. You're going to hell. You did the work. What's that? You were already saved and then you work. You can't lose the salvation that's already there. Amen? We worry about that. Look, get over that. Get over it. You know, you'd be better off in your prayer life if you did. If you think somebody can lose their salvation, then you're, you what you're doing is you're relying on them to keep it. You have to rely on Jesus to keep it. He, he's the one that gave it to you, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So what would, do you really think God would turn around and say, well, now I got you saved, now you've got to take it from there. And you've got to rely on you. Would you imagine relying on you? Mm -hmm. Like I said to you, I'd be a chain smoker. Man, I'd be like six packs a day by now, worrying about when I lost it this morning. When did you lose your salvation? When did you lose it? I know all the verses, people. I can even go to the verses and show you some things. Go to uh, Matthew 24. I'll show you where they go. I'll even show you where they go. Go to Matthew 24.
Matthew 24. Now you'll notice something he says. He says, he says things like, the end hasn't come yet. Look down at, um, ver we'll start at verse number 3. He says, and, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That's the subject, isn't it, Miss Adrian? When he's coming back, right? When is the end of the world? How many of you asked that one? When's the end of the world going to be? Now watch how Jesus answers it. He says, take heed, no man deceive you, verse 4. He says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and, and shall deceive many. There's a lot of people today coming around. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Listen to me. Hey, look, I got, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm a preacher. You listen to me. That's what you hear today. Guess what? Stop listening. Go to the book. Amen. You're not going to be here for Matthew 24. Amen? Amen. He says, he says uh, and ye shall hear of wars. How many, want, how many brought to that one? There's wars, Miss Mary. There's rumors of wars. The end's coming. You, I'll hold up a sign out there. The end is near. How many people have heard that one? Yeah. The end is near. Rumors of wars. Watch how he does. First, keep going. He says, see that ye be not troubled. Why? For all these things must come to pass, comma, but what's that say? You know what Jesus, Jesus turned around and said, what are you listening to that tripe for? There were always wars. When did war stop, Miss Roxanne? It hasn't, has it? Do you realize, I'll, I'll give you a reality check. Do you know the United States has never left the country they have invaded? Have we left Germany yet? Have we left Japan? We never leave. We even got back into Vietnam, didn't we? Hey, remember that day we left Korea? No, why? Because we didn't. We never leave. There's always going to be wars and rumors of wars, but the end has not come yet. Go down to, um, go down to, uh, Verse number 14, he says. He says, this part, he says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then, what? Shall the end come. The end is not on the wars and the rumors of wars. It's not on the Antichrist and all that. You notice what he says? It's about the gospel. That's the most important thing, is that the gospel is preached there. Okay? Uh, stay with me here. He says, um, he, sa he turns around, he says, uh, verse number uh, 30. Verse number 30, he says, and then, after all this stuff, and then, he says, Shall, uh, shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, where? In heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see, when they shall, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the what? Clouds. Clouds. In heaven, with power and with great glory. Amen. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, that's Israel, from the four winds from one end of heaven uh, to another. Is that, that's what he's telling you. He says, what's that? You better understand something. I'm coming back and sending my angels. And he's going to take up his people. You know, he never says there's going to be a rapture there. He's taking them somewhere. It's probably the judgment. By 25 is where they take them, judgment. And that is not your rapture. That's what they tell you, isn't it? Mostly this. Look at that part. It says he's going to send his what? Angels. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He's going to send his what? Angels. Angels. Verse 
Verse number 13, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 13. But I would not have you to be what? I don't want you to be stupid, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are also, which also, them also which sleep in Jesus, will God do what? He's bringing souls back with him. Now watch. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, not by man's words, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord who? Himself. Wait a second, Miss Adrian, where's the angels? Didn't the other one say he was going to send angels? What does this one say? The Lord himself. What's that? You're being deceived, people. It's a different gathering. It says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Amen. You see the difference in each of them? There's no, uh, there wasn't, there wasn't anything that was going to, the same of those uh, two sayings, okay? Now, he put one thing other than that in there, and when he was talking about the end, maybe somebody will pick it up, he says, uh, and he that Take heed, no man deceive you, right? It's not. Uh, just losing it here for a second. Can anybody see it? He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Where is that? I lost it in my head real fast. Which one? Anybody have it? I'm going to have to go on. We all know that verse, he that is endorsed to the end shall be saved. He's talking about your body. Your saved body, your body's still there. You endured till the end of the tribulation and you're still there. He says, guess what? You're going to go into the millennium. You'll be in the millennium if you were able to stand. Uh, verse number 13. Because and because iniquity shall abound, the love, of, the love of many shall wax cold. Verse 12. But he that shall endure to unto the end, the same shall be what? Amen. So you, they said that to you and they said, see, you got to endure to the end. You're not going to be in 24. You're not worried about this. This isn't spiritual to you. You're already gone. You were gone in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You're gone. This is Matthew 24. Guess what? You're not here. You've already been taken out. That's it. You got that set. That's a seven year period, Matthew 24. He's not sending any angels to pick us up. The Lord himself shall descend. He doesn't need angels. You know why he doesn't need angels? Because inside of you is the Godhead. And all that has to do is be brought out and you will go up. Amen. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, but he himself shall be saved, but not so with fire. Verse number 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile with the temple of God... He shall, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So if you smoke cigarettes, that happens. There is no cigarettes in that context. There are preachers that preach this. That's not talking about cigarettes. That's talking about where your foundation is. That's talking about what you're building upon. 
And if you're building upon something else, that's the wrong way. If you're bringing in another doctrine and you're giving out another doctrine, guess what? You're defiling the temple of God. Amen. That's what he's talking about. How can God, look, it's like being, it's like being, uh, getting saved and, and coming here and then guess what? You go over to Catholic Church tomorrow and you're tic-tac-toe three in a row. Going, Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed be the fruit of the loom. Let me go forward, light a candle. What do you got? You got a false doctrine you're putting in with it. Amen. You're defiling the temple of God. Amen. Now do you understand what he's saying? So when the preacher starts talking about you smoking cigarettes at the temple of God, start laughing at him. You have your choice. You want to smoke some cigarettes? Go ahead. I don't care. You're the one that has to deal with it when you're older, not me. I'll tell you, you know, that's not good for you. It's going to be bad for you when you get older. You've got emphysema. That's a health thing, but guess what? I, 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 what would you rather have? So, somebody get a better prayer life or give up cigarettes? Look, preachers have been preaching since the 70s, alcohol and tobacco, alcohol and tobacco, alcohol and tobacco. You know what I said to those preachers? Go out to Kentucky, go out to Kentucky and deal with the farmers who were saved and have built those churches out there through tobacco. Right. I went to one. I walked into Hopkinsville. I walked in. I, I sat down. One of the guys came over to me. He talked about it. He's a tobacco farmer. You could see his tobacco. Tobacco built that church building and everything. Right. People are getting saved there. What am I supposed to do? Get up and turn around and go, Yo, you bunch of heathen smoking cigarettes. You're all going to hell. <laughs> Look, it's your choice. And there isn't one commandment that says, Thou shalt not smoke. Can you show me cigarettes in there? People, can you can you help me out a little? It's not the important thing. The important thing is like this. Do you have Christ or don't you? I care less if you want to gasp for your breath at the end. That's your problem, not mine. And by the end, just so you know, I'll be doing that too. I'll be gasping for my breath just like everybody else. Amen? Amen. Can I help you out a little? <laughs> These guys don't have... That. Look, don't go buy a pack now. All right? No good for you. All right, let's keep, let's keep going. Verse number 18 to 23. I want to get done these today. He says, let no man deceive you. Deceive himself. Let no man deceive who? Himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. In this world. He says, let him become a fool that he may be wise. What's that? The foolish things. The foolish things of preaching. Uh, look, how could... You mean with all this stuff and all this uh, science that we got, you just got to believe in Christ and get saved? Yeah. That's foolishness to an intelligent into the world. To intelligent people into the world. Uh, people, where are all the scientists at today? I don't see any in the place. You know why? They got the wisdom of the world, that's foolishness. The greatest wisdom, Moses had all the wisdom of Egypt. Moses learned the technology and had it all. You know what? He chose God's way. Moses knew it all, knew all that stuff, he chose God's way. Mm -hmm. Right, it made sense. Verse number 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Amen? Mm -hmm. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. You notice... Uh, in all the battles that God does, you ever notice that the men, they set traps and they always fall into their own traps? God uses their traps to beat them. He doesn't even need to conjure up anything. Just use their own most of the time. Okay? He says they get caught in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are what? Vain. Vain. Now, you know what? You can get how many people here? I'm striving to get rich. I want to get rich. I want to get this. I need this. And I need that. Guess what? You get to the end. What does it matter? It doesn't matter in the end. But while you're here on earth, I have no problem. Go out and have a good time with what you earned. Don't let anybody make you feel guilty about enjoying what you've earned. You went out and worked it. You can earn. You can do it. You can have a good time with your stuff. I do say give. 
give. Why? Because your people need to get saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. He says, uh, look down again. It says, therefore let no man glory in men. In what? Amen. In men. For all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or present things or things to come. All are yours. And ye are Christ. And Christ is God. That's how he ends it up. You know what he's trying to tell you? Stop getting into all these divisions. Now I'm not telling, look, two people can't walk together unless they agree. You can't turn around. You're not going to be able to walk with charismatics and talk Bible. It just doesn't work. How many of you noticed it yet? Their Bible studies stink. It always goes back to the same thing. You can't agree. You can't walk with them. You can't agree with them. You can't agree with a Catholic. What are you going to agree on? Tic tac toe. It's not going to work. You got to. Two have to. You can walk with somebody on salvation if you both got saved the same way. But I'm going to tell you something. As soon as the book comes up, what happens, brother Larry? The vision starts because you don't agree. That's what he's trying to say. But in the end, you know what it is? We're all Christ, and Christ is God's. Amen? No divisions, people. Especially in here. We don't get clicks. I break them up. Amen? All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God. I ask you, Lord, to bless this time. I ask you, Lord, that uh, you would be good to, good to us the rest of the day, Lord Father. You're good to us anyway. Lord God, let's have some fun and fellowship with our families. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, we thank you, Lord God, for talking to us today that there be no divisions among us. That if we want to build upon the ministry, we'll build it with Jesus Christ and not with men's words, not with creeds of men, not with apostles' creeds. We will do it through the word of God because faith comes by that. We thank you, Lord, for being, for making this manifest to us, making it plain to us, having a preacher speak commonly to us and not with other words and fancy words. We thank you, Lord, for being that simple to us, and we love you. If any man needs to get saved, if you, you heard this message today and it's just like pointless, you, need to, you, you may think to get saved. Maybe you don't have Christ. If you die today, where would you be if you're not saved? You're, you're starting to feel it right now. You know Take Christ as your Savior. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart how that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The Bible says that Christ, he once suffered for sin. The just, that's Christ. For the unjust, that's you. That he might bring you to God. Don't you want to be brought back if you're not saved? Come to Christ. If you're saved, how are you building? How are you building? Not what, how are you building? And are you building upon Christ? Get that foundation right. Father, we thank you. We ask you to dismiss us in peace. Maybe come back tonight and hear about Isaiah. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.